He's always with that man from Dusker. How strange. I'll bet he used some dirty tricks to gain his favor. That's how those scoundrels from Dusker operate. What a pleasant conversation you seem to be having. May I join? Please, continue. Oh, um, your highness! I was just... I said continue. I... I... I'm sorry, your highness! Such foolishness runs rampant. I fear it is the reality of Fargus for now. It must appear strange to them, to see me always in your company. Does it bother you to do? Of course not. However... Let me guess. You take exception to the gossip that you use dirty tricks to obtain your position. Is that it? That does perturb me, but not for my own sake. I am concerned about your highness's reputation. We're not talking about my feelings, but yours. As far as I'm concerned, those fools can talk nonsense until their tongues fall out. I am afraid I cannot agree. But if you were not concerned for your honor in this instance, then why did you intervene? Because it is my duty to do so. The day my father was killed, I saw the swine who did it. They were not of Dusker. I saw that, knew it beyond a doubt, and yet I was unable to prevent the massacre that followed. Nor could I clear away the dishonor of regicide that has unjustly clung to you and your people. I will not rest until I make up for that. I owe you, just as I owe the spirits of those I let die. I do consider Fargus to be abhorrent, but you are an exception. You offered me your hand, and pulled me out from an abyss of suffering and death. You risked your life to save a foreigner you had never met. The moment you extended your hand, I decided that only for your sake would I live the remainder of my life, and I would cast it aside in an instant if my death were to your benefit. For that reason, I cannot consider myself your friend. There are still many in the kingdom who despise the people of Dusker. It would be selfish of me to stand by your side as an equal. To do. Your Highness? Do you really believe I care one bit about the chatter of the ignorant? Of course not. Please forgive my impudence. I understand the intention of your words. Still, they grieve me. If you wish it so, you may continue to think of yourself as my vassal. I clearly cannot stop you. We need not be anything more or anything less. If that is what you wish to do, so be it. <sighs> Your Highness. Your Highness, S sorry, I mean, Dimitri, would you, um, do you want to train together today? Ash, of course, I'm glad you asked. After classes conclude for the day, meet me at the training ground. I'll be waiting. And afterward, let's plan on dinner. We'll certainly have worked up an appetite. Oh, yes, I suppose, uh, I mean, sure, it'd be... That is, it would be my pleasure to, uh, to dine with you. I mean, I, I uh, um... Ash. I'm sorry, Your Highness. I'm just no good at this. I'll do my best to improve. Are you still worrying over what I said to you before? I'm trying to do as you asked, but it's just completely against my nature. Trust me. I understand the urge to show respect where it is due. However, that is not the case here. Yes, I was brought up in a different family and raised in a different way, but otherwise, you and I are the same. That all makes sense, Your Highness. But I just can't bring myself to speak to you in such a casual way. Sure, when you get right down to it, royalty like you and common folk like me, we're all just people. But the common folk still rely on the nobility to keep the peace, and to keep them safe. Commoners pay the price for that in taxes and respect. That's what Lenato says. I suppose I can understand that point of view. But the flaw in your logic is that I am not king just yet. But that's not all there is to it. Hmm? I also respect you as a person. You carry the weight of the whole kingdom on your shoulders. 
You're a faultless warrior, and you're always so kind to your allies. Even me. On all accounts, I can say the same of you. But you also have a strong heart. I can't say that about myself. No matter the circumstance, you are never drawn toward darkness. That mindset of yours has done me well on countless occasions. Well, I... I do my best. So I guess, mutual respect between us is what's really the most appropriate. Precisely. Which means there's never any need to be nervous or uncomfortable around one another. It seems we may have circled back to where we started with this conversation, but... Let's at least agree that we both should learn to bend a bit. How's that sound? Alright. Let's start from the beginning, then. Would you like to train with me today, Your Highness? Of course, Ash. Come at me with everything you've got! Mercedes, I'm sorry to ask this of you, but... Will you lend me a hand? What can I do for you? Oh, is the cuff of your overcoat still torn? Mending that shouldn't be a problem at all. It's pathetic, I know, but I fear my sewing skills are... Well, as you can see, they're just about non-existent. Goodness! You must have been concerned when I tore your cuff. Ah, well... That is to say... Oh, would you please teach me to sew? I hear you're rather amazing at it. <laughs> of course I'll teach you. Don't look so heartbroken. You will? Thank you. Oh, I owe you for this. I'll go get my sewing kit. You wait here. I'm so sorry, Dimitri. I've never seen... Um... Well, it's just a bit... No need to dance around the issue. You're fed up with my clumsy efforts, aren't you? I thought you might end up bending some needles if you tried mending this on your own, but... How did you manage to break a pair of scissors? I'm just... I'm so sorry, really. I try to be careful, but with delicate work like this, I just can't seem to manage. There's no need to apologize. But you must have been uncomfortable making your way here with this tear. My inability to control my own strength is humiliating. Of course I'm useless at needlework. No giving up on yourself. You just have to practice, that's all. No matter how difficult something is, if you keep at it and don't give up, then you're sure to improve. Isn't that what you told me? Right you are. To give in to despair isn't like me. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, I'm ready to give it another go. Great! I'm glad to hear it. First things first, let's make sure the needle is actually threaded this time. No! I bent another one. Hey there. At it again, are we? It feels like I see you training here every day. It's my daily routine. I'm ill at ease until I've held a weapon in my grasp. <laughs> you said the same thing when you were little. <laughs> right you are. I've been meaning to come and talk to you properly for a while now. I was about to say the same thing. How long has it been? A decade? More? That was in Ferdiad, as I recall. You were just a little pipsqueak. You really have grown up, haven't you? I'm not sure it was quite that long ago. Not really. But it matters not. I remember those times well. Particularly your first words to me. Look at that young maiden wielding a giant lance! How adorable! Oh, don't look at me like that. I was thrown off by your haircut, that's all. It's all water under the bridge. Now, back then I was quite furious about it. My father did give me a stern reprimand for speaking so rudely to a prince. But then, I never had a chance to apologize. I was always getting into trouble back then, just like the incident in Duskar. Speaking of... Do you ever think about going back to House Karen? Do you... Cassandra? No. I'm happy with the life I have. No offense, Your Highness, but I don't fight for king and country anymore. I fight for Lady Rhea. It doesn't bother you? Being labeled a criminal? You're worried about my life as a fugitive from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Don't worry about me. I'm here because I want to be. It suits me far better than the life I'd otherwise lead, as a noble lady of the kingdom. Is that so? How about you? You've never wanted to roam free? 
to enjoy life as an ordinary knight, unshackled from all those princely obligations. I can't say the thought has never crossed my mind. However, I am the son of a king. It's not possible for me to put my own desires before the good of the kingdom. Ah, you're too serious for your own good. How'd you become such a stiff? Don't worry, I've been working on that. Stretching is a part of my daily routine. <laughs> if you can joke about it, there's hope for you yet. You don't like to talk much, huh, Dudu? I am not skilled in conversation. Any particular reason? Reason? I am only here at the monastery because this is where His Highness wishes me to be. Many here are frightened of me. Disgusted by me. I grow weary of it. That makes sense. A lot of people hate Dusker. They think all kinds of terrible things. Some of them even think you kidnap and eat people. <laughs> we sound like true monsters. Why are you smiling? Shouldn't it make you angry? I suppose. If those people would just talk to you, I'm sure they'd change their minds. I'll admit that when I first got here, I found you kind of intimidating. I didn't know if it was okay to talk to you. I hesitated. But like I said before, I just wanted to get to know you. And now that I have, I'm not scared at all. I am not very good at interesting conversation. We can work on that. Tell me about Dusker. What was your hometown like? Calm. More forested than Fargus. Each town had a specialty. Smithing. Fishing. You would be better off reading about it in a book. Okay, maybe you're right. But answer me one thing. You're a great cook and you learned at home. Why don't you make more Dusker-style food? As we have established, people hate Dusker. Food by itself may be harmless, but it is better not to sow seeds of discontent. Ah. But the cuisine of Dusker is delicious. I'd really like to try more of it. I am pleased to hear you say so. Ah, I think I get it. So the Sky God got into an argument with the Earth God, then Dusker was created? To oversimplify it somewhat, yes. <laughs> There's something so mysterious about it. There are only mountains separating us from Dusker, but it's like a completely different world. This has been so interesting. I've never learned so much about it before. There are not many left to pass on the legends of Dusker. Really? That's a shame. It's almost like when someone dies, or a family line ends. I think a place is only truly destroyed when there's no one left to remember it. You should tell more people about Dusker to keep it alive. That is a strange thing to say. Oh? Why do you think that? Dusker is forever the enemy of Fargus. No one cares about our culture or history. I'm different, though. I don't know anyone who was killed by the people of Dusker. I don't hold a grudge against you, and I never have. Um, Dudu? Is this recipe from Dusker? You don't care for it. No, no. I was actually surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Would you teach me how to make it soon? But it seems I am ever the teacher with you and seldom the student. You're right. I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, I have an idea. My mother taught me to bake the perfect sweets to go with tea. Would you like to learn how to bake them? It's a secret Martreats family recipe that's been passed down for generations. House Martreats of the Empire? I thought they were no more. It's true. My father's family was wiped out in the Empire. I'm the last living descendant. Are you certain you wish to impart such precious memories to me? Of course. Now that my family's gone, I'm the only one who knows the secret. The sweets would vanish from Fodlin if something happened to me. I see your point. Yes, I would like to learn. 
tried to do. I wanted to thank you again for helping me out the other day. Everything was ready in time for dinner, and we all agreed the food was really tasty. I barely did anything. That's silly talk. With just a few ingredients, you made an amazing meal. I could never have done it, no way. You deserve all the praise in the world. I still have much to learn. Truly delicious food brings a smile to people's faces. Until I see His Highness smile in that way, I will spare no effort to improve. Well, if that's your aim, you're in luck. I've seen him shovel in your food with gusto. You must be really ambitious if you're not satisfied with that meal. I'd love for you to teach me your ways. I want to be a great cook too. Your skills are not the problem. You merely make errors of negligence. Well, sure, I know that. But how can I stop making those errors? No matter how hard I try, I always seem to mess things up. The pan explodes when I cook. I forget my purse when I go shopping. That's just how life is for a scatterbrain like me. Just the other day, I was nearly laughed off the training ground for wearing mismatched shoes. My uncle used to sigh in despair when he saw me messing something up. You simply fail to pay attention to your surroundings. Ensure the pan is on the flame and that the knives are put away properly. Look at yourself in the mirror before you go out to make certain you have what you need. Everyone makes mistakes, but yours should be easy enough to correct. That's all great advice. Thank you, Dadu. You really have a kind heart. At first I thought you were so stern all the time. Am I that imposing? Uh, well, a bit. Maybe if you smiled sometimes. All you have to do is lift up the corners of your mouth. Like this. See? I see. I will try it. Sylvain, I want to apologize for the other day. The other day? What are you talking about, Felix? Is this a trap? You know, when I called you insatiable. Oh, that? Can't say it didn't hurt, but... You have nothing to apologize for. I mean, you've said worse, Felix. Considerably worse. Come on, we've known each other since we were kids. We're not gonna let your constant verbal abuse get in the way of our friendship, are we? No, I suppose not. Whenever I started doing something dumb, you'd yell at me about it. And whenever you dragged me into something, Ingrid would find out and start lecturing us. All these years, and not much has changed, has it? But you're different, Felix. You used to be so... I don't know, carefree when we were young? Now you're the exact opposite. Well, you're not any different. Good for nothing then, good for nothing now. Again with the abuse. This from the guy who's always been by that good for nothing side. So, did you come to apologize, or to insult me? I was on my way to train and I saw you. That's all. You're off to train? Again? Now who's insatiable? Better than sitting idle like you. A little idleness would do you some good, pal. Come on, let me buy you something to eat. No. You have to choose, Felix. Our friendship, or your training. My training. <laughs> Goodbye for now. What did... Is he... Wait, Felix, I'll come train too. Wait up. Hello? Oh, hello. Have you been there long? I was absorbed in this book. Another silly legend? First of all, they're not silly. And second of all, no. It's an essay that speaks to uncommon and challenging battle scenarios. I've been researching such things since you proposed your unique strategy. Listen to this. Your commander gives orders that put your hometown in extreme danger. Do you carry out the orders or protect your hometown? What nonsense. I was talking about real world tactics, not some dumb ethical question. Whatever your personal feelings on the matter, I see similarities between such tactics and these dumb ethical questions. I haven't read beyond this one, but I think the obvious answer is to follow your commander. 
The duty and pride of being a knight demand that you follow orders, regardless of your own feelings. But if I were put in such a position, I don't know how I'd fare. In fact, were someone to carry out those orders, I know that I'd attempt to stop them. Stop bothering with all this. You're not meant to be a knight. Go find a husband. Excuse me? You heard me. I know you hate the ideals of chivalry and pride. So much so, you prefer to escape your duty as your family's heir. You have no right to criticize me for my ideals. Perhaps not. At least I know not to heedlessly obey orders. I know not to romanticize blind obedience. My brother taught me to think for myself. Don't you dare bring Glenn into this. You're right. Forget it. Hey, Sylvain. Uh, can we talk? What's up, Ash? Looking for more life tips? Uh, no. But I did want to thank you for coming to my aid in battle the other day. <laughs> that? No need to thank me for that. No, really, I insist. If you hadn't been there, I definitely would have been finished. You really set a model for my training. I can only hope I'll be able to save someone like that someday. Again with the studying and the training? You're so stubborn you make Ingrid and His Highness seem downright easygoing. My advice on the whole thing is to just follow your instincts. That's what I do. If someone's in trouble, I help them. You don't need to be a valiant knight to know that. Doesn't matter if the person is an ugly old man or the cutest girl you've ever seen. You help them. So you're saying... Everybody's the same, deep down. It's our job to help anyone who needs it. Ah. What? You're looking at me funny. Did I say something wrong? No, no. I'm just surprised, that's all. You're actually a much better person than I thought. Was that a compliment? I can't tell. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean any insult. I was just really impressed by what you said about helping people without even thinking. To jump in and help someone without any thought at all of reward. That is real virtue. <laughs> How did you say that with a straight face? I'd be embarrassed if I were you. Come on, Ash. You're an honest and overall great guy. You'll be an honest and overall great knight, too. Of course, people like you need to watch out for greedy people. Huh? Remember when I said I didn't need any thanks? Well, I didn't say anything about not wanting a reward. There's a girl, and we... We had a misunderstanding about who was allowed to date who, so, uh... I need to hang out in your room until everything calms down. Should only be a day. Or two. Tops. Sylvain... Come on, Ash. Remember? If someone's in trouble, you help them. You want to be a great knight, yeah? Oh, fine. Since you helped me, but just this once. All right, I knew I could count on you. You'll definitely be a great knight. He really would be a great person if he could just stop all the scandal. Whoa, what happened? The pants smoking. <laughs> Mercedes, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, my eyes, I can barely breathe. Oh, Ash, I'm so glad you're here. My cooking's not going very well at all. What did you put in there? I used some of this spice, that seasoning, and the herbs on the top shelf. Then I started frying it in oil. That explains it. <coughs> we use that herb for smoke bombs. Just turn the heat off and cover the pan. Oh no, the people in the dining hall don't look so good. Sorry, everybody. Could we clear out the dining hall for a few minutes, please? Well, some folks were a little annoyed, but at least we got the place cleared out. It's a good thing no one mistook all that smoke for an attack. That could have been a disaster. I'm so sorry. I always mess everything up. No, it's my fault. I should have taught you which herbs to avoid. Don't blame yourself. I just need to figure out how to do it right for next time. Next time? You still want to try again, even after all that? 
Of course! If I didn't, that would just be a waste of everything you taught me. I guess that's true. If you quit every time you made a mistake, then you'd never learn anything, right? That's a great point. Ah, maybe my mistake was frying the herb in oil. If I had boiled it instead, then there wouldn't be smoke. What do you think, Ash? Boiling, huh? Yeah, that'd be fine. Great! I'm gonna get this right next time for sure. Okay, now that you know the technique, go ahead and solve this problem. Ah, I've got it! Finally! <laughs> See? Isn't it fun to learn? Absolutely. You're great at this, you know. You really seem to have all the answers. I wish I could study and just soak up knowledge like you. How did you get so good at this? Well, studying was something of a necessity for me. What do you mean? My father was one of the king's knights. One day, he never returned home. He just left without ever saying a word to me or my mother. I'm so sorry to hear that. Losing a father so suddenly? I completely understand. After he left, I thought a lot about where he might have gone. My father was a devout believer, so I was certain he must have come here, to Garag Mok. Here? Really? That's why I was determined to gain acceptance into the Academy. I needed to come here so I could search for my father. The problem was that I needed money to get in. Lots of it. And I didn't have any at all. So I entered the School of Sorcery and Ferdy at first, hoping I could somehow find a path here. I studied tirelessly until I finally earned myself a recommendation. Oh, wow. So for you, studying has been like a way to meet your destiny. Destiny, huh? Well, yes, but it's a bit embarrassing when you put it like that. Now I have other reasons for wanting to keep trying hard. I want to protect all of my friends and allies here. I'm studying hard so I can be as useful as possible to everyone I hold dear. You've worked so hard. I really respect that. I'm going to follow your example. Do you know this legend, Ingrid? It's about the Battle of Fodlin's Throat. Oh yes! I know it like the hilt of my sword. With so many valiant knights appearing in this story, I couldn't help but wonder which was your favorite. I really like this one, the one in the middle, the knight who stands in defense of the Duke. Such a wonderful knight. One of my favorites as well. That makes sense. He's so noble and virtuous. In fact, he kind of reminds me of you. I... <clears throat> Thank you. You remind me of him as well. You are honest, as is he. Uh, no, I, I'm nowhere near as great. Maybe someday. Maybe if we work hard together, we can both become knights as glorious as the one in this story. Together, yes. Now wouldn't that be something? If only we could. Huh? Ash, the legends are exactly that. Legends. They're not indicative of real life. The cards we are dealt are what they are. We can work with what we have, but we can't change what's in our hand. What's that supposed to mean? I long to serve His Highness as a knight. The sort of knight that legends are written about. But I was born bearing a crest, and with that comes responsibility. Whether I like it or not, I am the last hope of House Galatea. I am the only one who can carry on the family bloodline and restore our lost fortune. To do that means setting aside my own dreams and ambitions. You still have the right to pursue your dreams. Ash, I must ask something of you. Yes, of course. Anything. My dream is aligned with your own. Please, for both of us, promise to see yours through. That doesn't seem fair. I'll never be able to see my dream through. Doing so would mean terrible misfortune for others. So, I am bound by honor not to follow through on my own dream. But, I can help you achieve yours. Come on, this isn't like you at all. 
Please, don't smile when your eyes are so sad. 